and Zaki, the $3 favourite. Light on for the seven stakes. They're off and racing. And uh, there's a nice line out. Zarex jump well together with the favourite Zaki. Going global's very handy on the rails and Hinge being sent forward wide out. Think it over drops in fourth in front of Zarek. Further back to Moy O'Brien on the inside of Huya Mao Diamond and Arapaho's very wide out. Fangirl's gone down to the rails to sit on the inside of Fireburn. Going Global goes along at a strong speed. Leads the favourite Zaki up by two and a half lengths. Hinge races to third in advance of Think It Over. Then Zarek from Moy O'Brien. Two lengths further back to Huya Mao being partnered by Diamond. Uh, further back in the field, Arapaho just a touch keen on the outside of Fangirl. She's improving along the rails, Fangirl, but well off the lead and Fireburn sees them all so going global the American mare leads at the 800 metres by two lengths on the favourite Zaki hinged into a clear third then think it over in fourth on the rails from Zarek further back to my Oberon then came Diamond Hieronymus puts Huya Mal into a three wide position to creep closer Fangirl all cluttered up on the fence from Arapaho and Fireburn's last of all going global at the 500 metres coasting along in the lead by a length on Zaki two lengths away then to think it over, starting to come into the race. Nash about to come off heels, hasn't done so yet. Then Zarek, my Obron's creeping into the race. But Zaki, Chad Schofield said go. Zaki races, two lengths clear. Think it over. Now he gets off heels. It's Zaki a length in front. Think it over's coming. Zaki in front. Think it over. Being lifted by Nash. Yes, got up. Think it over. Nailed Zaki right on the line. I think my Obron third from Zarek, Huya Mallon, Fangirl, then going global, Fireburn, Diamond, and Arapaho. What a comeback. Think it over. After having 497 days away from the racetrack with a tendon injury, Kerry Parker, the maestro, brought him back. He had a run in the Winks, a run in the Chelmsford, and victorious today in a million dollar race. He's just something out of this world, think it over. From the giant killer once before, he's now the giant who makes a comeback that's going to be memorable. What can you say? Uh, the two old warriors and... Um, it was just Nash again. He found a way. Just when you're claiming him the winner, Zaki, he just lifts off the canvas, uh, think it over, after a, uh, a lovely ride by Nash. We didn't see sort of going global, going out that hard. So it didn't really work out 100% right for Zaki, but that's hardly an excuse. He tailed up beautifully behind him, but Nash was just always there, ready to pounce the last few strides. So two great warriors, I must say, going to the line together. It's just amazing, Nash, the way you can get these horses going. It's a great training performance by Kerry Parker, but Nash Wheeler at his very, very best there. He just lifts them off the canvas and just throws them over the line. He's an outstanding rider, Nash. He's like a hand in a glove with this horse, isn't he? He is, and it's, it's amazing. You, know, you get to know these animals so well, and he just obviously knows every hair on this horse and what he's capable of doing, and you've just seen it there today. He picked him up at the right time and threw him over the line. The Queen Elizabeth Stakes took some guts, and it was a daring ride to get to the outside fence. But today, that was just inch perfect. He's grabbed Zaki right on the line. Nash loves him. So does Kerry Parker, and the fans love him too. What a horse. What a comeback. Kerry Parker, the proudest man on this race course. Oh, no doubt at all. You know, just absolutely sensational to, uh, you know, everything that's gone into this bloke. Like I say, it wasn't just me. It's everyone that's uh, been involved from, from my staff, Tim Boland's staff up at... Uh, at Wyong and everything, um, you know, it's uh, from farriers to float drivers to vets, you know, uh, it's been a lot of work and uh, just absolutely thrilled to see that today. How gutted were you when you first realised he was injured? Uh, I don't think I could say that on TV. You know, I think um, like anybody, you just, uh, you know, from a tendon, it's a, it's a scary move from there to think you're coming back. And uh, to watch that today was just sensational. What's the process? Is it all about nursing him back so that he can he can get back and his legs are good again. Oh, no doubt at all. Like everything was uh, was done that could be done, and it was just up to the horse. Uh, like I say, when it first happened, uh, you know, I had the conversation with Richard Johnson there about look if he doesn't come back, at least he goes out on on top, being a Queen Elizabeth winner. But uh, it was always going to be no risk to him, you know, to the horse. It was always uh, he had to be right for us to come back to the races, and uh, yeah, he's just kept ticking the boxes along the way. So during that process, did you ever think that you, you had him back, or would you never know until you got him back to the races? Uh, 
No, you never know until you get back, uh, I don't imagine. Uh, you know, everything along the way was really good, you know, uh, every process, every step. Um, it was just done correct and, and everything was ticked off along the way. So never had hesitation through it all, which is what you need, you know. It was all, it was all good, it was all forward. You're just uh, uh, a long time coming, you know. Uh, you had to be patient and just go through everything and uh, that's where we've ended up today. So a long time coming all through that process. Did you give yourself a chance to, to dream a little bit how this day would feel? No. No, no, you just, you just wait. I, I started feeling how this would feel once we got back and he'd had his first up run, you know, and he pulled up 100% off that and everything was, uh, everything was rosy, so to speak, and uh, from there it was, oh, geez, it'd be good to get, get him home with one now. You know, if we can win one of these decent races, it's all been worth it. Well, you've got one, you might have more. Well, so, what, so. so what is next? Uh, is there one before the King Charles? No, no, he'll have uh, four weeks now and come into the King Charles nice and fresh. The, the plan was always to give him these three runs, make sure we got his fitness up and, and then it was just a matter of uh, if he can go into the King Charles on nice fresh legs, that'd be super. Congratulations. Cheers, thank you very much. Well done, Nasha. How proud of you are this horse? Oh, very proud, you know. Um, he, he just... Uh, that, was, that, was, that was just a gallant performance. I mean... Um, you know, I just, I just sort of um, really relied on the horse's ability and his will to win and I was reluctant to come out from behind him because I, I sort of thought, well, it's still running at the time, you know, I, I, I can't really, it's no good trying to come out and attack it now because it's still, it's still going 100 mile an hour. So I just sort of waited until I sensed that it was either starting to wait for us or, or, or feel a pinch and um, as soon as I showed my bloke that bit of daylight, he, he wasn't laying down, he was just, he just attacked the line. It was just... For a horse that's come from where he has, to pull out a finish like that is just unbelievable. Hold well on, buddy. Cheers.